All right, I have started the recording now so that we can go ahead and get started in just a minute because it shows 9.59 still on my clock. However, at this point, I do not see anybody in the session live. So I don't have to take attendance yet. There goes one. Now we got one. All right, I got that one down. Now, all right, good morning, Brandon. Um, at this point, you're the only one in here. And um, y'all are starting on Chapter 10 this week. Uh, it's some very useful information for you in the chapter. Uh, it's performance tuning and system recovery. Oh. Sorry about that. And there's a number of tools that they show you in this chapter that I do use regularly. There's some of them I don't really use, but um, some of them I do use regularly on it. Um, so the um, so they go through. So before we talk about those, let's go over just a couple of other little things real quickly. Registration continues to occur if you're going to be here spring semester. And if you have not registered yet, please contact me and I'll be glad to assist you in advisement and in registration. If you're a cybersecurity student, and I'm wording this thing broadly, even though there's only one live listener, because some students do listen to the recordings. Um, it's just the recordings do not count in place of the discussion. Um, if you are in cybersecurity, I strongly urge you to talk to Mr. Spurlock or me before you register on which courses you should take. First one is uh, most of your cybersecurity courses, the ones that get into specifically cybersecurity, are only offered once a year. So you want to definitely pick them up when you're supposed to pick them up. Second thing is, if you take the electus we suggest to you, then you should be eligible to receive the networking degree or diploma along with the cybersecurity degree or diploma. In networking, um, if you use the cybersecurity courses as your electives, um, that you will probably end up one course short when you finish the networking um, degree or diploma um, from what you need for the cybersecurity. And so you don't have to come back and take one course. Um, but that just depends on how things work for you. Um, and you can see when we definitely schedule courses, although we're changing them right now, using the pathways documents that are in course documents. Although some of those are being updated, so which semester we may offer a few courses may get switched around. I know in cybersecurity, I'm pretty sure it's the 2602, we're moving from summer to a different semester because that's just been a problem for some students. Um, all right, let me get you. Now, second thing is this um, week's one, Ooh, I missed one, okay. This week's session is coming to you from Brooks, Kentucky. I'm in a motel room there. Um, my car decided it really didn't want to go all the way back last yesterday afternoon. And it got shimmying real bad, shaking real bad when you go change lanes. And I stopped and actually did get a mechanic to look at it yesterday. Um, it wasn't until after I waited several hours and the, um, I checked into the motel, but he came actually came to the motel and looked at the car, checked all stuff out on it and found that the right wheel that um, my front end assembly needs replacing that is worn out, but there was a good vibration to the wheel. And we went, okay, that's it. The left wheel was solid, but he said the parts were wearing out under there and stuff. So this afternoon, he is supposed to replace those. And this actually is a guy that comes and does the stuff wherever you are. So he's going to replace 
those front end parts for me this afternoon at the hotel. And so I'm going to stay here for one more night because he's got me scheduled for an alignment at four o'clock at another business because he doesn't have the equipment to do that. Um, and the parts are supposed to be available at 1230 today for him when he ordered them yesterday. Um, Y'all know how it works possibly with that if Advance doesn't have the parts in stock, they can get them trucked in the next day usually. And that's what he pulled off here. Um, and so they'll be available at 1230. And then hopefully he gets it done in time where we get it aligned. So I'm going to stay a second night here. I can work in the room this afternoon while he works on the car and everything, you know, make it smooth. So I am coming from a different location today on it. Um, if you're going, that background doesn't look real familiar. All right. Um, so I should be back home in Northwest Georgia by tomorrow evening. Uh, if you're in sessions of mine tomorrow, I fully intend to meet them, but I intend to be on the road. I'm just going to stop at the time I do sessions tomorrow at 10, 11, and 1. The um, 10 o'clock one I may do here from the motel right before I leave. I'm not sure how quick I'm going to get away in the morning. And then I'll just stop and use my phone to do those sessions. And I don't remember if any of y'all are in any other sessions, but you may be. So I'm going to intend to stay to schedule on it. Um, I'm working on other stuff here, just like I was last week while I was in training, which was full day, like I told you. Um, Thursday, Wednesday, I mean, I got here at 3 o'clock, or to actually to Indianapolis, um, at 3 o'clock after I left at 6.30 a.m. And immediately, well, I had to wait a bit because I had to get my room available. Um, the hotel, the Sheraton Hotel, was just like every other business, short of help. Um, and then I had my picture taken and then we went and had a short session that evening for just a little bit. And then we went out in groups to supper of our regional groups. So the other governors in the southeast region and me and our person that will assist us from KI, from the international headquarters, took us to supper. So basically I was saw it there from three o'clock till nine o'clock. The next day it went from 8 a.m. till nine o'clock again because we started with stuff first thing after breakfast and had meetings all day with working lunch and right on through to um, where we had we went to headquarters that afternoon and had supper at headquarters and they bust us out there and back so by the time we got back at nine o'clock or shortly after nine o'clock, that was all we could do all day. Um, so that was a full day. And Friday, we started, no, that was, yeah, Friday. We started at 7 a.m. and had breakfast as a group and did some training together. And then they sent us out to recruit members for Kiwanis. Um, that was an interesting morning. And Although me and the other one with me and we were actually with the international rep that we did sign up all three people we were sent to talk to. Although they was interesting conversations. I may tell you more about that at another time. Um, and then we were in training sessions the rest of the day and right on into the evening right on up till late afternoon. Then we went to the NCAA Hall of Fame, which was really neat. Um, hopefully I can have some pictures out there for y'all to see soon. Um, and we toured it, had supper there, and we were back nine o'clock or shortly thereafter. So guess what? That was a 15 hour day, I guess, 14 hour day, something like that. Um, Saturday, we started at 8 a.m. after breakfast and we went until right on through to when we went to dinner Saturday night. And then that was the end of it. So those were full days. I answered emails from students every day. Usually did it both in the morning, early morning before I went to sessions. And then after I got back to the room at night. Um, 
yesterday I was on the road for several hours and then sat there stranded for a little bit. Well, I really wasn't stranded. I, when I was having problems, I found a pilot station to stop at and then went to getting help. Um, I checked classes. I graded stuff on yesterday and I graded stuff last week. So I am up to date on grading. Um, so it has been an interesting experience. So as you look at chapter 10, the um, performance monitor and the um, task manager both are highly useful items. Task manager is the one I use the most. Um, if you have a program that you can't get it stopped or it's messing up other stuff, you can go in there and stop the program. Um, you can also start programs in there. And I have actually used that when there was a problem with Windows that I um, had um, re-enabled the um, GUI for Windows from within there because you can run the program Windows.exe and that actually activates the GUI. Um, so, but you can also look in there in the task manager and that you can see um, what's using what and that type of stuff. Um, the performance monitor will tell you exactly how much of everything's being used. You can look at your memory, see if you're using up all your memory and you need to buy more memory for your machine, or if your um, disk drive is getting beat to death, and so on. So there's a number of things. You can look at your network activity, et cetera. So you can look at the performance of your machine and performance monitor. That is really useful. Um, they mentioned that you can, they've got a backup program available in there in Windows 7, except I'm not real impressed with that one. Um, it's there. Um, my suggestion to you normally is um, copy the files that you want to save from one place to another place. And that's what I normally do. Um, they talk about some recovery of things available for you. The device driver rollback can definitely be a useful one when you install a new driver and it doesn't work. The device driver I have rollback I have used that one. The system restore points is also highly useful. Um, and with Windows, I guess from Windows. 95 forward system restore has been on there. I'm thinking goes back to has to go back to them because I know I started using system restore back in 97 and ran into it at that point. So it must go back to Windows 95 because that's before 98. Um, system restore is real useful on setting that when you install programs, you run updates for Windows, etc. Most of the time, Windows will automatically make a system restore point for you at that point. Then if what you just changed, which ch changed settings involved in Windows, if those changed settings goofs up everything, and where this most often comes into play is when you're starting the machine and just won't start, that if you'll go back, choose the option where it lets you go back to system restore, Go to System Restore and choose the most current point and have it restore that. Now, that's going to wipe out whatever you just did. And then you can go backwards to previous ones also, except you can't jump them. If you choose one before a certain one, it includes wiping that stuff out also. So it's not just on that one settings. It's going to change everything back to that point in time, which means everything you did after that is gone also. Now that's not affecting your data files at all. That's just the system settings, but that will free up and get you back to a stable machine. And that's where it has been highly useful to me, particularly when I work on repairing people's machines to get their machines back running, um, is using system restore. And that may be what I'll write my article that I need to do this week on for the newspaper. So that just struck me as a good one, and I would read it one. Um, so that's what System Restore will do. Um, so if you're changing your machine often, you may well run into using System Restore. Um, if you don't install things very often, 
Um, if you don't do updates very often, you probably aren't going to have, you're not going to have many restore points is the first part. Second thing is you're probably not going to have a real reason to go backwards on it. But if you're continuously changing settings in your machine, you can, besides it automatically doing restore points, you can also tell it at any point to do a restore point. So you can create restore points also. You can tell it, make me a restore point now. So you're actually not making the restore point. Um, Windows makes it. And what it does is it just, um, it's basically doing similar to what you're doing with your snapshots and virtual machines and um, virtual box. And that where I told you to do your snapshots. And actually when, if y'all take 24, 12, 13, or 14, um, you'll find those books all have you um, restore snapshot that you've made when you first set up the machines at the beginning of each chapter. And that's basically that snapshot there is exactly, is almost a, exactly the same as a restore point. And so you're setting the machine, your virtual machine, back to its settings that it had at a previous point in time, which was, in that case, right after you had created the machines, and you had them with all of their initial basic settings, and then you want to be able to get back to that at the beginning of each chapter. Now, in this book, don't do that. You can do a rest um, the word just went out of my head. You can do the snapshot, but don't restore the snapshot unless you really have to. You might want to do a snapshot as you get ready to start a chapter, and then if you goof up in the chapter, go back to restore that snapshot at the beginning of the chapter, but this book builds as it goes through the book. So you use some things you've added and changes you've made to settings in previous chapters. And those books that we're now using for 24, 12, 13, and 14, they are set up where each chapter works off of that virgin machine. Any questions on that? So, um, I think you'll find the chapter interesting, particularly if you've worked much with your machines, which is what you should be learning to do in this course, and that particularly this will be one point if you go out there and start helping people with problems they've got on Windows 10 machines or even other versions of Windows, most of the stuff all works on all versions of Windows, um, that this will be some tools you can use to fix people's problems that they're having with Windows quite often and keep them from losing too much stuff. All right, questions for me on all of that? Or comments? And that was a good comment, Jermaine. And Luke, don't forget to make a comment. Because this is most it's an engagement activity and y'all are supposed to be participating in here. Um Dow, because you can use it for that one also. Uh about eleven. Okay, what's the question, Jermaine? Oh, okay, I bet I know what the question is. You're going to ask about, this says there's no assignments to do, and that's true, because Intune requires a credit card, and I'm not going to make you enter credit cards. So we're going to skip all of the assignments in Chapter 11, and truth be, I have never had, I've never used Intune or had a reason to have used it out there, so that's another factor in it. Um, but the big factor is the reason I chose to skip um, any assignments for y'all to do is because to do in tune requires a credit card. And I'm pretty sure that's what I got out there. Let me just double check because that's going off the top of my head. And I've already told y'all I'm on the road. And you know I've been on the road since last Wednesday. And that's exactly what I've got in here. We will do no labs in Chapter 11 due to the credit card requirement. 
So there's no notes there because you don't need any notes because I don't have any notes there about here's problems with these assignments. Um, now, theoretically, when you do the stuff with Intune that you can do it where it doesn't charge you anything, but that's always risky. And just like I would warn you if you're using Google Cloud, Azure, or AWS, be real careful where they want you to put credit cards in. Um, that those now give some ways for schools to do it without needing credit cards in there and that they've built in limits on accounts that they create for students in those cases um, because you can run up bills real quick. Um, so I'd be real careful on that. And the second thing is um, on those, you can run up bills that are recurring charges and may even start growing and that so it may not be 10 cents first month and then the next month a few dollars and then all of a sudden when you notice you've got this decent sized bill and it's because you've been running things you shouldn't have been having running all this time so be careful with the cloud the cloud is a powerful tool but the cloud can also be a powerful detriment to you and so i'm real hesitant on ever putting credit cards and stuff and I'm not going to require students to do things they got to enter a credit card into. Um, so that's my approach on it. Good. Um, I really wasn't reading your mind, Jermaine. It's just when I looked over and realized what the chapter was, I went, ooh, okay. Because in um, CIST 24, 12 or 14, one of those, um, there's a couple of chapters on using um, Microsoft's virtual machine um, product and y'all are using VirtualBox and getting the correct thing for that is hard. So I don't have students do any assignments in those chapters. So when we get to 11, which is the next thing after where we are, um, that means all you got to do is do a test in that chapter. So you got to study the chapter and then take the test. Um, but you'll have no assignments to do. That also means my job's easier that week too, um, which actually is next week. All right, any other questions for me? If there's not, I'm going to stop the recording now. Um, and tell you all to have a good week. And we'll have session next Monday at normal time. And I hope to be sitting at school when I do it. So just keep in mind, the only thing big about that one for you is if you were going to call me, which I don't hardly ever get any calls on it. Um, or come by my office, which very seldom does somebody do, um, since y'all really aren't hardly on campus, if you are, um, that I won't be on campus and I won't be answering the telephone. But if you leave a message on the telephone there at the school office, it actually goes to my email. So I'll still get it like today, all day. Um, tomorrow, I won't get those until I get in because I won't be checking school email when I'm on the road. Um, and I'm going to check personal email when I'm on the road. It's when I'm stopped at breaks points. Um, but I will be responding to email throughout the day today. Tomorrow will probably be late evening before I respond to email. But I will be responding to it. So have a good day day. Have a good week and I'll see y'all next week. And the recording is now